the Spirit, the Bible says, are obvious. In other words, obvious. In other words, nobody has to find them. Come on. In other words, you're, you're going to shine. In other words, they're going to be yes. able to, to see it in your life, in your actions, in your, in your daily walk. In other words, they're, they're not going to have to ask you, are you born again? Are you a Christian? Because your life is going to yes. exemplify yes. the life of Jesus. Amen? Yes. Amen. Not to say that we're not perfect, because we're not perfect, right? You know, we, we come from the east side of the kingdom. So sometimes we make a mistake. Sometimes we do get out of pocket. But overall, you know, the human factor, overall, we do represent the kingdom of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed as we go before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. Father, we ask, my Lord, that you would shed light on guardian angels' whereabouts, God, and that you would give Jamie the peace of God, her family, Lord. Father, my God, that you, Lord, would just see them through in their time of need, along with the Luzano family, Linda and Raul, God, the Carlos, the rest of the family, Lord, that you would, God, walk them through in their time of loss, God, yes. time of grief. Give them the strength that they don't know exists, God, to see them through. And that your peace which surpasses all understanding would guard their hearts and their mind in Christ Jesus. Yes. Father, anoint the, the, the word this morning. It is anointed, Father. Anoint the messenger, Lord. Father, my God, that you will remove me and that you would take full control as your word would penetrate every heart. Father, my God, that it would land on fresh soil. Uh -huh. That every individual here will receive victory in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we praise you. Hallelujah and amen. 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 So, if you're viewing via Facebook, we welcome you here to Riverside Peacemakers Ministries on behalf of our pastors, Pastor Ruben and Diane Putra, along with the body of Christ. And if this is your first time here, we welcome you. Yes, thank you. Pray that you would make this your church. Amen. Amen. And so I will be speaking in Mark in chapter 4, beginning in verse 35. Yes, sir. Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 35. So if you have your Bibles, please turn there. And if not, utilize your electronic device as we read the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So on the same day, somebody say on the same day. On the same day. When evening had come, he said to them, this is Jesus speaking to the disciples. He said, let us cross over to the other side. Tell your neighbor, let us cross over to the other side. The other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, tell your neighbor once again. Now, when they had left the multitude. Now, when they had left the multitude. They took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. Tell your neighbor, other little boats. Other little boats. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so uh -huh. that it was already filling. Okay. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are all perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea. Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, there was a great calm, but he said to them, why are you so fearful? Come on, Pastor. How is it that you have no faith? Verse 41, and they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Ah. And so here is Jesus, and they, him and the disciples are crossing over the Sea of Galilee, and in Mark uh, chapter Four, or Mark chapter 1, uh, the Bible says, or actually chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says that Jesus, mm -hmm. that he was teaching to a multitude, a large crowd of people. And the crowd, you know, they begin to push on him. The yes. crowd begin to, you know, uh, uh, pressure onto him. Uh -huh. And to where he told his disciples, uh, let's get into the boat and sail a little while off. And then from there, the Bible says, he started teaching them. Because how many can agree with me and be just like a, a concert that you've attended or you've seen on TV where the crowd just begins to push onto the stage. It becomes 
uncontrollably. So Jesus had to get away from the crowd. And then also in Mark 3, 9, the Bible says because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him. It's almost like, you know, when you were back in the day, you were about ready to do a crime. You like, uh -huh. keep the car running. Come so on, Pastor. Got disciples, in other words, keep this boat running because we might have to escape unto this little boat in order to get away from the crowd. I mean, we see this in the lifestyle of, of big-time movie stars, big-time sports stars where, you know, the crowd, they just want uh, autographs or they want to touch them or they want to push up to them. And, and so they have to, you know, with security detail, escape from the crowd. This is the same thing that was occurring here with the Lord Jesus. And so the morning, this is that they cross or Later that evening, they crossed into the Sea of Galilee. Uh -huh. And the Bible says that suddenly a big storm, Pastor was talking about storms, it starts to come upon them and, and rock their boat. Have you ever had your boat rocked before? Ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Tell them to tell you. Ain't no fun the rabbit. And you got to understand because some of the disciples, they were seasoned fishermen. Uh -huh. This was their livelihood. This was their job. So... This wasn't no ordinary storm. You know, there there are some storms that we face, and, you know, they're normal to us. We, you know, thunderstorms, whatever it is, it's like we don't pay no mind to them. But then again, there are some storms that would cause us to maybe worry a little bit, and maybe some fear, or, you know, here they, 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 they fear for their lives, and they've been fishing knee-high to a grasshopper all their lives, it's probably as boys. This is what... What they did, and yet this storm right here caused them to cry out to the master, fear for their lives. And this morning I want to talk about, is there anyone here that you're going through any type of a storm? Wow. See, there's different kinds of storms that affect our environment. We know of them. There are snowstorms and hailstorms and rainstorms and thunderstorms and tropical storms and sandstorms and, and dust storms. We we know about weather. We know about environmental storms that occur, you know, throughout our lifetime. But then there are storms, you know, that, that take a toll on our lives. Storms that affect us. It affects our peace. It affects our mindset. And, and storms that take their toll upon each and every one of us. Come on, there, Pastor. There, there could be some financial storms that, that are occurring. There could be some marital storms that are occurring. Some relationship storms that, that are occurring, you know, with our children or, or family members. There, there could be some health storms and you could be battling sickness right now or some sort of a condition. Those type of storms or spiritual storms that, that create storms of doubt, storms of fear, storms of worry, storms of insecurity. And here, Jesus, he tells the disciples, let us go to the other side. And this morning, we might find ourselves here in a little bit of a storm that is creating to us to be exhausted. Storms that may, maybe in our mindset, we, we want to stop coming to church. We, we want to quit. We want to quit our, our job. Or Come on, Pastor. Quit our marriage. Or we want to yeah. quit whatever relationship that we're involved in. We, we want to stop. It, it's taking our soul upon us. And, and we're just dog bone tired. We can feel that way this morning. And all we want to do this morning through our storm is just like the disciples, make it to the other side. Come on. Make it to where you can have a peace of mind. Come on, Pastor. Make it to where there's no more pressure or no more stress that is taking over us. We just want to make it through the other side. Like if you ever had a problem in a marriage and you're fighting like cats and dogs and all you want to do is, man, I just can't wait until the sun comes up tomorrow. Let me just get by what occurred this day. And this could occur through our problems or any condition. See, there are seasons in life that we have to understand. Seasons that each and every one of us experienced before. We experienced joy. We experienced excitement. We experienced a thrill. We experienced certain things like when we first get saved. We come to the church. We're, we're a little bit happy about coming to church. Uh, we're a little bit excited. There, there's some expectations about how God is going to treat 
transform our life and change our life and take this bad situation off of us and we're going to be a new creation, a new creation in Christ like the Bible declares. But then again, the storms rise up. Come on, the Pastor. The storms begin to hit. Come on. And then all of a sudden that joy turns into a little bit of, of stress and the joy turns into a little bit of, of worry and the joy turns into a little bit of, man, you know, I, I didn't think it was going to be this bad coming okay. to church. Okay. You know, okay. storms just overload us and take over us at times. And if you don't believe anything like that, just ask anybody in regards to maybe like a like a woman who's pregnant. You know, during the pregnancy, when you first get pregnant, you know, there's a little bit of excitement or a little bit of joy or the, the thrill of an expectation of having a baby. But after a while, talk to any pregnant woman and she gets tired of being pregnant. <laughs> after the eighth month, I'm tired of feeling all swolled up. I'm tired of having, having to waddle everywhere I go. I'm tired that my friends can go to the party and I can't go no more. I'm tired of looking at myself in the mirror. I'm tired of being bloated up. Am I going too far? <laughs> I'm tired. Come the on. only thing I just want to do is get to the other side of this pregnancy Come on. and walk into motherhood. Ask any marriage that's, that's, that's on the rocks this morning. You know, when you are or even a relationship, every relationship starts off with joy. You know, you meet somebody. There's an excitement. There's a thrill. There's an expectation. Oh, but all of a sudden the storms start coming in. And all of a sudden we want to kill each other. Uh -oh. I mean, in the beginning we listen to Barry White and Al Green and, and Marvin Gaye and things were, you know, the love was in the air. Hey! Looking at each other with cow eyes and hey, hey! Speaking, you know, those sweet nothings and telling them how good they look. But now you can't stand their presence. Now you just want to walking to the other side Woo! of the couple is probably praying, Lord, just get us through this trial. Yes. Lord, just get us Come through on, Pastor. the other side. Or, or talk to anybody that's facing a sickness. I mean, they're tired of hospital visits. They're tired of all the medications. They're, they're tired of getting all these needles stuck in their arm. They're drained. They're, they're emotionally and spiritually drained. And all they want to do is just get to the other side of that healing. Come on. Or if you really don't believe me, just talk to any angel fan in here. I mean, the season started off, they were 10 and 1. But all of a sudden, it just seems like they're losing every game that they play. And the players and the fans are probably saying, all I want to do is just get to the next season. And some of us here this morning, you might be going through some storms. Whatever the situation, whatever the case may be, and you're saying to yourself, you know what, Lord, all I want to do is just get to the other side. Yes, sir. You're tired of your situation. You're tired of what's going on. And some of us this morning, you might want to question, well, why am I going through a storm? But tell your neighbor that sometimes, sometimes. storms Storms are good it's for like, us. Well, wait a minute now. Ain't nobody like to be in a storm, right? We don't like when we're in the midst of the storm. But sometimes, sometimes, storms are actually good for us because sometimes, how many can agree with me, that God uses a storm to grab our attention. Amen. See, when things are going smooth, sometimes we forget that there's a God that we can talk to. When things are going smooth, sometimes, you know, we, we think that it's on our, our own account. That, that things are happening. But when situations arise and, and when we have an understanding that, man, I need God in this situation, God sometimes will create a storm just for you and I, you and him, to have a conversation with the living God who saved you. Can somebody say amen? Amen. See, or there might be some areas that Pastor talked about that, that the Lord wants to bring correction in. Yes, sir. Some areas that, that we might need some spiritual development, some, some spiritual growth. And number one, God uses the metaphor of a storm to, number one, grab our attention. And see, we could be here this morning because how many of you know that when we come to church, a lot of times we want to come with our halos on. A lot of times we want to come acting like everything is going smooth. A lot of times we want to act like me and my wife don't argue no more. 
a lot of times we want to act like we don't have no, no problems, that, the, that all our children are, are, are praying and giving us their tithes and coming to church. But that's far from the truth, can somebody say amen? Amen. I'm still praying for my kids to be faithfully to come come through that door. Come on. That Amanda will walk through and Alyssa will walk through. Not only you, but you stay Amen. Can somebody say amen? And I know they weren't your brain for your children. Yes. Well. Come on, Pastor. So tell your neighbor in everything, there is a purpose through God. And he uses everything with a purpose especially when it comes to storms. Mm. Tell your neighbor once again, storms are good for you. Storms are good for you. Number two, it teaches us that no one is exempt from storms. So in other words, whether you're saved or not saved, <clears throat> storms are going to come your way. Okay. It doesn't matter that you gave your life to the Lord. You're, you're going to face some life pressures. You're going to face some hardship. Yes, sir. They, they're going to come. Don't, don't, don't pray that they're not going to happen because all through the time we're living, Storms are going to come our way. Number three, that the Lord reveals to us that he won't stop the storms from hitting the boat. I mean, you know that, you know, the boat, there's going to be some storms that rock us. But the Bible says that God is faithful, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So even though the storm will hit the boat, the Lord will not allow that boat, your boat, to get sunk. Can somebody say Amen. Amen. So here the disciples, they're in the midst of the storm, and they become so afraid that they wake up Jesus. Now, the other day we talked about character identification when we're reading the Word of God. In other words, put yourself into their shoes. In other words, utilize your imagination, in other words, to see what was going on here in this situation. You're on the boat with Jesus, the disciples. Jesus is asleep, and they wake him. And we all think about it that, you know, Jesus just probably came out of the boat and said, you know, peace be still. But in reading the Bible through those scriptures, the Bible says that the multitude kept pushing on them, that the multitude kept surrounding them. It's almost like if you're the movie star, I mean, day in, day out, people just wanting to touch you because, see, they see miracles that he did. They heard about the woman with the issue of blood that all she did was touch him. So you can rest assured that there were people that were in need that all they wanted to do was touch Jesus. They were bringing their kids. They were probably bringing their families. And it's almost like if, if you know, we see crowds when they're giving away free stuff, right? They tell a crowd that, oh, they're giving out free iPhones for the, for the first hundred people. You, I mean, you know that we're probably going to be in that crowd trying to get an iPhone. And we're going to do everything we can to get there, right? Or free food, right? Have you ever seen crowds push their way? And, I mean, just like with the COVID, I should just mention about the toilet paper. People fighting for toilet paper lines just to get in. Well, you got to look at it that Jesus was tired day in, day out. As a matter of fact, he, he couldn't even sit down to have lunch without a crowd bugging him. How many would like to get bugged when you eat lunch? Crowds just want him. He can't even get Mama Sheila from Garden and have a little supper for himself because of all the people. And here he is. The Bible says he's asleep. I mean, you know that he's 100% he's man, 100% God. He needed rest. He would get tired. He would get hungry. And here he is asleep. And the disciples have the nerve to wake him up. And now, so they wake him up, he's probably a little irritated because the human factor is when we're tired and somebody wakes us up, we get we get frustrated, we get angry right away. Just think about the times when you wake up, right? We got we got attitude. So he went out there to the wind and they wake him and he says, Peace be still, and that peace, that word is Paul, which means keep silent and be still, and be still with Spimo, which means duck the mouth with a muzzle. So in other words, the reason why I'm saying this is because, you know, how many, have you ever been around somebody you just want to duck their mouth with a muzzle? You just want to tell them, shut up. In other words, Jesus, it wasn't this little passive, you know, where he went out there, he was probably irritated, he was probably frustrated, he was probably upset, you woke me up from my sleep. He told that wind, he told the, he told the storms. In other words, he probably said, shut up. Basically, you're going to muzzle yourself and be quiet. 
And so here he is right here, and the disciples get afraid, and they're wondering, you know, they're afraid of the storm, but now they're afraid of Jesus. And now Jesus turns around and he starts rebuking them. He starts telling them after everything that we've been through. He's telling them after every miracle that you observe. He's telling them after I rescued you, after I saved you, after I delivered you. When nobody else wanted you around, when you were all beat down, Come on, when Pastor. your body was all sucked up, when your mind was all disturbed, when you was there in that prison cell, and I, I made a way for you to come out, and now you want to you wanna fear for your life, and you want to forget that I'm involved in your life? Wow. He said they walked with Jesus for three years. They walked with him. They saw the miracle, and we have the word of God. Not only do we see miracles because everybody here is a miracle. Everybody who has called upon the name of the Lord. Come on, Pastor. Backgrounds. God has delivered us from something. We just got to reach back into the back of our past and realize where God has brought us from. Each and every one of us, we were destined for hell. But God delivered us. God saved us. Hey. God rescued us. And he gave us a rock that each and every one of us can Stand on. And yet we want to turn around on a storm. Jesus is saying, look at you. Were, you were uh, born knee high to a grasshopper sailing on your life. And now a little storm wants to turn you into a, a sissy lala. I mean, you want to get all bent out of shape because your wife asks you to help her clean the house. This is how you're going to act. I mean, you want to you want to come out of pocket because he wants to challenge one of your decisions. I mean, you want to quit coming to church because of, of haters. You want to you beat somebody up because somebody is frustrating you? I mean, look at who saved us, people. This is Jesus. He rebukes them. Wow. Yeah. He turns and says, look at what's wrong with you. Come on, Pastor. I'm the living God right here. Yeah. If I'm with you, if, if God is with us, who can be against us? Right. Come on. We are more than conquerors. Yeah. See, we can walk through any storm through Christ Jesus, can somebody say amen? Amen. So he tells them all that. And then he goes on and he says, you know what? This is what we're going to need to do right here. But well, basically he don't say that, but this is what we're going to need to do. Because the storms that we talk about, every, each and every one of us, we face these storms. You know, I don't know what storm that you're involved in or what's going on in your life, what situation that is disturbing our peace because how I many you know that we can be serving the Lord and our peace can be disturbed? How I many you know that we can be serving the Lord and deep down in the crevices of our heart we want to quit? Wow. I mean, nobody knows, right? Because on the outside, we look good. Say, so you tell yourself, you look good. Look good. On the outside, people can't read into your heart. But the Lord himself could read into your heart. Yes. And right now, you're disturbed. You could be frustrated. You could be, you know, spiteful. You could be ready to quit. You could be ready to allow a cussing spirit to come upon you and start cussing people out because your dog bone tired. I mean, keep it real. I've done it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> come, on, those that are on come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Because I know we at Riverside Peacemakers Ministry, we, we don't be cussing, right? Because of frustration. Woo right? So he said, in order, we want to go through the other side. Yes, sir. And see, we've seen all the miracles. We've seen all that. And here, in order to get to the other side, I mean, you know that he tells them the first thing we got to do is we got to, he tells them, we got to cross over to the other side, so we got to leave the multitude. In order to lead the multitude, what he's saying is basically not everybody is going to be able to come on that on that road that we're traveling on. There's going to be some individuals that we're going to have to cut loose. There's going to be some crowds that we're going to have to put a muzzle on. And I'm talking about, you know, the crowds of our mind. Because how many of you know that, how many know that our mind, it could be self-defeating at times. Yes. You know, we got to do away with negative thinking because yes. Colossians 3.2 says, set your mind on things above. And not on earthly things. Come on, Pastor. We got to do away with doubt. We got to do away with the mindset that says we can't do it. Because Paul says in Philippians 4.13 that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. 
We got to do away with fear because in 2 Timothy 1 7, the Bible says, For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And we got to do away with thoughts of quitting because Philippians 1 6 says, Being confident in this, that He that begun a good work in you will fulfill it until the day of yes, Jesus yes, Christ. Yes. In other words, you might not be acting right now like a man of God, you might not be acting like a woman of God, but rest assured, my Bible. He will speak to your supervisor. He will speak to your 
your wife. He will speak to your husband. He will speak to your children. And all things will be uh, uh, put in that environment into a peace because of one boat that had a conversation with Jesus. You want an answer to your storm? We don't go to the co worker. You want an answer to your financial problems? No, Pastor, we don't get on the phone and we don't call somebody and ask somebody, this is not on you, to borrow some money. <laughs> no, we got to trust in the Lord in all we do yes, and lean not on our own understanding. Yeah. To trust in the Lord in all we do, that means you might only have a dime in your pocket, but you got to trust the Lord that the Lord is going to bring that matter from heaven and we got to stay strong until you see the manifestation of your prayer being answered. Keep fighting for your children. They will get saved. Yeah. Because the Lord desires that all would come to repentance and that none shall perish. So you can rely and you can bank on the word of God. You can trust on the Lord that yes, he will save your children as long as you continue to have that conversation with the Lord. God will open up doors. It is God that has the ability to open doors just like he has the ability to shut doors. So I want to let you know, just allow your storm to come over you, increase your faith in God, trust in God, and see how God works in each and every one of our lives. Can somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Prayer. Prayer is the answer to every situation that we have. You talk to him. He talks to your problem. Your problem gets a muzzle put around its mouth and then the peace of God comes upon yes. you. Yes. That's when we have the victory. Can somebody say yes. amen. Yes. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just right there where you're at. Why, why don't we all stand? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just right there where we're at this morning. We all face life stresses. We all go through things. Some of them we can we can fix on our own, but that's only temporary. It's a temporary fix. But when we learn to trust in the Lord in all that we do, when we learn to allow Him to fight our battles and not try to fight our own battle. This is where the Lord begins to bring that transformation into each and every one of our lives and our faith is increased. I don't know whatever situation anyone is going through this morning. It could be one of the storms that I talked to this morning. But rest assured that there is one that we can call to in the time of our need and we can rest assured that he would bring us the help that we need in our due season. Can somebody say amen? Amen. So I'm going to pray. If that's you, I don't want you to, uh, to say what it is, but just by the raising of your hand, you've been, you've been going through some storms. You've been going through some battles. You've been going through some life stress. You, you, your marriage could be on the rocks this morning. Your relationship could be on the rocks this morning. Right now, you might be contemplating. That could be you that says, I, I don't want to come to church no more. Why should I go to church? You're praying for your children and you haven't seen any results. My God. This morning, allow the peace of God just to take control of your mind, your spirit, And make a, a declaration and a commitment that this day I'm going to trust you, Lord. The way you brought me out is the same way you're going to bring their deliverance. The same way you're going to heal my bones. The same way you're going to bring that healing to my body. I gave you and I receive faith this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Father, for your people, God, I don't know their situation, but you do. Spirit of the living God, I ask this morning, God, that you would touch every individual here, God. Father, Lord, that 
you would declare that reassurance that all we have to do is trust you, Lord, to commit our ways unto you, to love you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and to allow you to fight our battles, God. Father, we declare every promise you've given us and we stand upon the rock this morning. And God, that we will testify as to your goodness during our storm. And as we wait the manifestation of your glory, God, through breakthroughs in each and every one of our lives. Father, we thank you in advance. We thank you for all that you're doing. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray.